we need to talk about the Dutch farmer protest. I did not plan to make a video on this subject. Quite frankly, I find the subject to be exhausting to talk about and extremely stressful, considering how close it is happening to me. But the comments of a few so-called patriotic socialists, Jesus fucking Christ, we're actually doing this, set me off. Let's have a look at them. So, according to the Western left, top row equals dangerous petite bourgeois reactionaries. Bottom row equals the true substantive revolutionary working class. The average Dutch worker, in their common sense, views the farmers' uprising as their own. The average Western Marxist, in their theoretical confusion at best, views it as petite bourgeois. How did it come to this? Leftists endorsing a global food crisis because farmers are right wing, dude. Dutch farmers are 100% right in opposing degrowth policies that will reduce food output amid pending global shortages. Yes, most of them are ideologically right wing. Why does that matter? The compatible left believe the petite bourgeoisie, small business and farmers are the main antagonists to the proletariat and not a transitional class with merely bourgeoisie aspirations that is increasing, increasingly more precarious and proletarianized as imperialism advances. Holy fucking shit, can all of you people just stop talking? You have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. These comments show to me that a nasty narrative is currently making its rounds among certain parts of the Twitter left. And that is why I'm making this video to course correct. These comments are not only wrong on a fundamental level, but they also show a dangerous trend that is happening right now, where a certain kind of online leftist becomes extremely susceptible to far-right talking points. And I think it is high time that we address it. Now, I am not expecting to fully convert any of these so-called bad socks of their reactionary ways. And I'm fully expecting some of them to call me a CIA plant or something like that. However, I also know that many of these people are pretty deep in Leninist theory. And if I recall correctly, then Leninism, as it was defined by Stalin at least, also made a point about self-criticism. I hereby invite you to self-criticize yourself and open your mind to a new perspective. Besides, if actual news reports aren't gonna deter you, then a hack to gather video by some fat Dutch asshole isn't gonna deter you, right? As for everyone else, I hope that this at least will serve as a quick perspective on the Dutch farmer protests and give some information on what's happening here and why they are happening in the first place. Hoofdstuk 1. How the fuck did we get here? Let's talk about factory farming or bio industry as it was known over here till the 2010s. Before World War II was most agriculture in the Netherlands based on relatively small family farms. In the winter of 1944-45, there was a famine in the northern parts of the Netherlands due to the Nazis robbing the country blind near the end of the war. Food production in the Netherlands had stayed roughly the same for most of the 20th century at that point. Though, with the help of the Marshall Plan, the Dutch government decided to scale up and industrialize Dutch farmers after the war. These formerly small family farms would, over the decades, develop into giant factory farms that would produce massive amounts of agricultural products producing as much products as possible for the least amount of costs, regardless of the consequences. Gee, that sounds familiar. Where have I heard this before? What is important to note is that a lot of these factory farms were set up to the American example. America had been industrializing its own agricultural industry before the war, and Dutch farmers took a lot of lessons from the Americans on how to scale up their own farms. Another calamity the American government has brought upon the world. This meant that at a certain point in time, the small family farm just did not really exist anymore in the Netherlands. Kind of. However, the public image of the kindly small farmer maintained in the imagination of Dutch culture. This is important for our discussion later on, so let's put a pin in that for now. Now, why is all of this a problem? There is no way to really put this delicately, but factory farming is an extremely cruel, wasteful and destructive industry. It often involves keeping a lot of animals in awful conditions in extremely confined spaces. 
this is quite obviously bad for the welfare of the animals, but it is also a huge factor for disease. All those goddamn pandemics can develop themselves so easily nowadays because globally speaking, we are putting just way too many animals in confined spaces in unsanitary conditions. Factory farms are also major emitters of greenhouse gases, mostly in the form of CO2 and methane. However, the point that I want to focus on, and the point that's relevant to our discussion today, has to do with the emission of so-called nitrogen compounds. Factory farms in the Netherlands are the largest emitters of nitrogen compounds in the country. According to 2019 data, the agricultural industry emitted around 46% of all nitrogen over here. Now, nitrogen is a large portion of the Earth's atmosphere. So you might think, oh, that's not an issue then. But the issue isn't in nitrogen gas. The issue is in nitrogen compounds like ammonia and nitrates. You see, fertilizer used by farmers, whether natural or synthetic, contains a lot of these compounds, which gets into the soil and groundwater. These compounds are great if you want to grow certain types of crops, but they're awful for a lot of indigenous species of plants. Meaning that if you keep over fertilizing for decades, then you will drastically reduce the biodiversity of the ecosystem. This in turn only worsens our problems with climate change and so on and so on. It does not help that in the Netherlands a lot of these factory farms are situated close to so-called Natura 2000 areas. These are nature reserves designated by the EU as protected and as such are subject to environmental protection under EU law. As you can imagine, a factory farm next to such a nature reserve can do a fuckload of damage to a lot of plants and animals that are already struggling to not go extinct. Now, this is not a new problem. Even back in 1965, were there people within the Dutch Ministry of Agriculture that were ringing the alarm bells and said that this was destructive and unsustainable. However, this was something that was quietly shuffled away by the governments of the time. In particular, certain Dutch political parties like CDA, the Christian Democrats, and VVD, the New Liberals, were very keen on making exemptions to establish environmental protections to stimulate growth and the market. With the wave of neoliberalism making its way through the Netherlands in the 80s and 90s, were the national government and local municipalities more than keen to give out subsidies and permits to large agricultural companies for them to grow. Of course, this suited the giant agricultural entrepreneurs that were now running these farms quite well, and a large group of them managed to get pretty rich from these subsidies. Now, this went on for a few decades until 2019. See, in 2019, the Dutch Supreme Court made a decision that nullified the protections for emission that farmers had enjoyed up until that point. This meant that, legally speaking, the Dutch government had to actually tackle the nitrogen crisis and make sure that these emissions were drastically lowered in a very short time period. This is where the problems began. Agricultural entrepreneurs, who for years had gotten protection from the government to pollute however they want, suddenly had to drastically change the way they did their production and in some areas drastically reduce their emissions. Those farms who were close to the Natura 2000 areas, for example, had to reduce their emissions by 90% according to the new standard. A lot of these entrepreneurs, suddenly seeing that they might lose, actually lose some money in the switch to a more sustainable method of farming, basically responded with the demeanor of any company that suddenly had to adhere to environmental regulations. They threw a hissy fit. And that is how the first wave of farmer protests began in 2019. During these first protests, farmers began to organize themselves in all kinds of organizations and started to protest by blocking highways with giant columns of tractors and moving towards governmental institutions in The Hague to protest. This went on, went on for a few months with several actions and responses by several people from the government. However, in March 2020, something changed. You see, in early 2020, there was a major pandemic across the globe. You might have heard of it. This, bas this basically grinded a lot of demonstrations to a halt because getting COVID was slightly worse than spending all day in a tractor holding up traffic on the highway. There were some actions in 2020 and 2021, but they were not nearly the scale that they are now. Which brings us to 2022. In June of this year, a new wave of farmer protest was unleashed because the government released their final plans for halting nitrogen emissions. These plans would involve curbing nitrogen emissions around 70% across the board which means that there were, were some companies that had to close down. As a response to this, a lot of farmers went out on mess and did a whole lot of actions, which included blocking roads and exits with tractors, covering roads with bills of hay, setting set bills of hay on fire, spraying manure and fertilizer all across protected nature reserves, chopping down a fuckload of protected trees, 
intimidating members of parliament by visiting their homes, threatening to slaughter a cow in front of parliament, threatening a civil war, a fuckload of harassment and environmental, of environmental activists and just people who disagree with them in general, spreading far-right conspiracy theories to aid their own agenda. And that is where we are now. Recently, the story came out that the Netherlands will probably be unable to keep their position as an exemption when it comes to emissions in regard to EU agriculture. Meaning that starting next year, it's very likely that Dutch farmers will have to abide by the same environmental laws as other European farmers. This, of course, will only throw more oil on the fire and only worsen the relations between the farmers and the governments of both the EU Netherlands and the EU. So now that we're all up to speed, I think it's time we talk about the organizers of these protests and why I think it's wrong to call these people working class. Hoofdstuk 2. The far right and you. When these farmer protests started, a lot of organizations came out of the woodwork. Some of these were genuine organizations that were concerned with the plight of the farmers. Others, however, had a more nasty tone to them. By far the most well known of these organizations is one called Farmers Defense Force, or FDF. For short. This is an organization founded in 2019 after a group of environmental activists had broken into a pig factory farm in Borkstel and had to be forcibly removed. The FDF is one of the main driving forces behind the protest and together with some other organizations, most notably Aga Actie, were they among the first to really get this movement off the ground. The language that the FDF has been using as time went on has also developed a more far-right nationalistic tone to it. They were the first who called for a civil war and several of the larger organizers, organizers among them have often spread far-right conspiracy theories like the Great Reset or the Great Replacement. It should also be noted that farming, farming companies are not the only players in these affairs. A lot of agricultural lobbies are the main reasons why these nitrogen emission plants were delayed and never properly implemented in the first place. A good example is the organization Agifex, which claims to do research into farming affairs but often spreads misinformation. This organization was founded by someone who used to be part of the CDA, remember them? But has since moved to the far right FAD and is currently part of the right wing party JA21. Another example is a new agrarian party BBB. This is a political party who are set to represent former interest in parliament, but they're mostly being financed by PR companies that have, have ties with the agricultural lobbyist group. Another important aspect to consider is the income of many of these organizers. When I use the term agricultural entrepreneur, I mean that quite literally. When these protests started, some economists ran a number and calculated that about 18% of all farmers were millionaires. To make a comparison, out of all the working people in the Netherlands are only about 1.5% millionaires. Another thing to consider is property. Land in the Netherlands is quite expensive, so the more land you own, the more capital you potentially have. Considerations that also have to be made is the equipment that is needed for modern farming. All those tractors and combines are not cheap and probably more expensive than what your average working plus class person can buy. Plus, like I mentioned before, have a lot of these older companies gotten a lot of subsidies over the years. However, if you really want to take this the Marxist way, like many of these pet socks want, then this is all relatively simple. The agricultural entrepreneur privately owns the means of production. His workers usually have no say in what kind of direction the company takes and there is no workplace democracy. This means that by Marxist definition, he is part of the bourgeoisie. And that does not, does not make him part of the working class. Whether he is a petite or upper bourgeoisie does not really matter in this regard. In many of these online left-wing circles exists this image of the sustenance farmers. The families that have been providing food for everyone and feed society. This is a careful image that groups like FDF has been using for their own gain to garner sympathy among the regular people. However, in many cases, it could not be further from the truth. The large organizers get a fuckload of funding from a literal billion dollar industry. That is the second largest exporter of agricultural products in the world. You all need to stop pretending that these organizers are men of the people. They are not. They are rich millionaires that managed to avoid environmental regulations for decades but whose actions have finally come back to bite them in the ass. There is a big difference between a cocoa farmer in Colombia who works his ass off for meager wages and a Dutch agricultural entrepreneur who makes millions per year. Do you really think that a poor agricultural worker struggling to survive can afford to park a tractor on the road for days on end? Hoofdstuk 3 Conclusions and some clarification 
Is every farmer that protests a far-right shithead? No. There do exist smaller Dutch farmers that indeed get into trouble because of these regulations. Especially younger farmers are hit hard by this since they often made loans that they cannot pay off now. There are also farmers that work with more sustainable methods and work on a smaller scale. These smaller farmers are the, one who, the ones who get hit the hardest by these regulations because they usually don't have the capital to really take the hit. For them, the sudden regulations are a dead knell, so their anger is quite justified in my opinion. Is it all the fault of the farmers? No! I know there exists a focal tendency of the Dutch left that likes to shift the blame on the farmers and the farmers alone, calling them kulaks and all that, but the Dutch government is also largely responsible for this. These environmental regulations were things that should have been taken care of decades ago, and the failure of parties like CDA and VVD to do so is a major contribution to the crisis. Online, many people like to think in binary forms. In these talks, there is a good side and a bad side. However, reality does not always work like this. And often, things are more complicated than it seems. Hell, I have learned things I did not know while making this video. Some of the points raised by the farmers are valid points. A good example of this is the effect that they get, that they get hit hard by environmental regulations, while other large pollutions like Schiphol Airport or Tata Steel in IJmuiden are allowed to continue. To me, the biggest problem with the farmers' protest is the reactionary language. An effect that the larger organizers are millionaires who are feeding their poorer contemporaries a fairy tale and turning them against the regular people, usually people who have nothing to do with it. Not every farmer is of course a rich millionaire, but the movement is funded by rich millionaires. And it is led by rich millionaires who are steering it in their own reactionary way. To all the online leftists who see this movement as some kind of revolution against the elite, you need to stop. This is not a workers' revolution. It never was, and it never will be. If you truly believe this, then you have fallen for the propaganda of a group of powerful reactionaries whose goal is not to liberate the country from oppression, but instead to return to a status quo that is destroying our planet. And that would be rather silly, now wouldn't it? Thank you all for watching this video. I want to extend my special thanks to my friend the Radical Writer, who did some proofreading of my script. You can find his writings in a link in the description. I've decided to not include some related subjects in this video, like how the police responded less aggressive to the farmers than to environmental activists, not because I did not think that these subjects were not important, but rather because I felt that they've distracted from the main point. In any case, I hope I have clarified some misconceptions in regards to the Dutch farmer protest. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.